All right, we are going to talk about the exponential function e in 4.2 and the big thing with 4.2. So remember e to the x, where this is an exponential function because we have our base as a number and our exponent is a variable. And remember that e, you know, is this kind of cool constant in not only mathematics, but in biology and banking and business that comes up a lot. We can use it to relate population growth. We can do a lot of things with E and it's kind of a cool number. So the big thing about this section, and I, I know I've said this before, but I think this lecture is going to be pretty short today, Woo is that the derivative of E is just E. This is the best function in calculus because the derivative is so easy. Okay, so the derivative is easy. The derivative of e is just itself. It's the only function whose derivative is itself. So I hope you read through 4.2, looked at the discussion that they kind of drove about why it's true. Um, also, make sure you look at 4.1 and review those exponent rules because that's some stuff that you're going to want to know. So I just want to do a few examples. And that's it. And then um, hopefully this will make sense. And when we get to 4.3, we'll get a little more complicated where we'll bring in the chain rule when we're dealing with E. But for right now, I just want to do some simple ones. So um, let's start off by finding some first derivatives. So find the first derivative of each function. Okay. So here we have, let's say, um, say we just have, let's start off simple y equals 3 e to the x um, minus x squared. So this should be pretty simple. If I take the derivative of this, what is the derivative? Well, it would just be 3 is a constant, so I can carry the constant over times the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x minus 2x, right? And we're done. We're done. That's it. Let's try another one that's a little bit more interesting. What if we had y equals x squared e to the x. So now we're dealing with a situation where we have two functions. I have x squared and I have e to the x. Those are two separate functions. So this is going to require the product rule, of course. So the product rule says leave the first times the derivative of the second, but the derivative of e is just e, plus leave the second, which is just e to the x, times the derivative of the first. Okay. And sometimes on one like this, oh, I need a y prime, Sarah. Sometimes on ones like this, what we'll see is we have an e to the x common. So, you know, we might factor that e to the x out. Let's say if I was setting this equal to zero, maybe I wanted to find a maximum or a minimum, um, then I would factor that e out and I and I could write it like this. This would be a nice way for me to find my, to find my zeros, to find my critical numbers, right? I want, let's do, let's look at another one here. So what about, what about, again, find the first derivative. What about um, 1 minus 2 e to the x all over 1 plus 2 e to the x? All right, so now we have a situation where we need to do the quotient rule. So I'm going to do y prime is down d up. So the derivative of the top, the 1 goes away, and I just get a negative 2 e to the x, so down d up minus up d down. So the derivative of the bottom, the 1 goes away, and again the derivative of 2 e to the x is just 2 e to the x. That's the lovely thing about e. All over down down. This might be my shortest video ever because I'm going to do like one more example and then that's it. Let's simplify this a little bit. So I'm going to take this guy through so I get a negative 2 e to the x minus 4. Now remember, e to the x times e to the x, I add exponents when I multiply like bases. So x plus x is 2x. And then I'm going to take this negative 2 e to the x through, and I'm going to take this negative through as well. So I get minus 2 e to the x, and then this becomes a plus 4 e again to the 2x. And then on the bottom, I'm just going to leave that as 1 plus 2 e to the x squared. Okay, this one actually turns out pretty nice because these guys cancel. And look at what our final answer is. Negative 4 e to the x all over 1 plus 2 e to the x quantity squared. So I hope that stuff makes sense. Um, let me do one more example and then 
and then I'll call it good. I told you this was going to be short and sweet. So the last one, and then we'll be done. Let's find the equation of the tangent line. to the function y equals, let's say, 4e to the x minus x at x equals 0. So equation of a tangent line, I need the derivative. So y prime, the derivative of 4e to the x is just 4e to the x. The derivative of x is 1. I'm going to plug in 0 for x. That's 4e to the 0, remember? Anything to the 0 power is 1. So I get 4 minus 1, which is 3. So that's my slope. When x is 0, what is y? y of 0 would be 4e to the 0 minus 0, which is just 4. Remember, e to the 0 is 1. Subtract nothing, I get 4. So what is the equation of my tangent line? y minus 4 equals 3 times x minus 0. And I can't help myself. Usually I leave my lines like that, but because of that zero, that's really nice and pretty. I can put a little bow on it, and we get y equals 3x plus 4. I think that's the record, people. Only 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, I hope this makes sense. We'll get a little bit more complicated with the chain rule in the next section. Let me know if you have any questions.